Hello, hi there, you lovely Aquariuses. Thanks so very much for choosing to get your love forecast and from me, Bella, the Secret Psychic, uh, for March 2017. And for those of you who've never you know, used me before, or don't know how I work, how I work, because I work with my spirit guides. Um, so it's them kind of conveying the sort of general overall themes or tones that um, some of you should be um, bearing in mind or getting some insight for when it comes to your love life for 2017. I have to start by saying that I think that the reason I'm giving today for Aquariuses are for a select few Aquariuses. I don't think this is going to be for all Aquariuses. Um, actually, the tone for your month is very slightly different from the energy that, let's say, is happening for some other star signs. But, like I said, I feel this the message that I have really for my spirit guides is for a select few. So this may not apply. So if it doesn't apply to you, just uh, um, maybe join in on the general horoscopes that I have for this month or um, come back another month. Normally, uh, there's not so specific, but it feels to me that it's an important message that my guides want to give across to some Aquariuses that may be experiencing, let's say, a not so good time. <laughs> All right. So it feels to me from what my guides are saying here from your first week in March that actually there's a lot of you pondering the direction of your love life, pondering on existing connections, wondering whether it's worth it, worth your energy, your time, your patience, your everything. You get a very, very gloomy outlook in terms of things that don't seem to be working the way that you'd hoped or anticipated and you really thinking about things. But more importantly, about how it's making you feel. And I think that's a good place to be focused on because I, I get for a lot of you, you don't like feeling like this. And who does? Who likes to feel like things aren't working out or going not quite the way there was? And you're also wondering whether it's just a feeling as well that you're having. But no matter what, the feeling doesn't feel good. So that pondering aspect of what I've been shown is more about what can I do to change the situation? Can I affect change in somebody else? Is it worth my time or... What is it that I can do at a personal level to change me or to change my circumstances? So there's a real emphasis on some of you deciding to really put yourself first, to not take the way you've been treated from somebody else or to not take the lack of what you're getting from somebody else or to stop waiting or to stop choosing people that just aren't right for you. I just get as a general disappointment and for those of you who are single I think there's some disappointment let's say a little bit when it comes to um, your romantic um, activity, you know, meeting people that are just not living up to your expectations or your standards. So again this is all about inward looking about what is it what is it that you want to put your boundaries around, what is it that you want to shift and change so that you are receiving love in a better way sometimes it's about self-worth you may be in connections where actually they are not being very good and you've put up with it but it's about time now that you do put yourself first hence why some of you may come to the conclusion that actually you need to leave a situation whether it's established or whether it's new and even needing to leave fixes that and for some of you it may just be that you withdraw your energy completely until somebody else gets the message that you're just going to put yourself first that it will become the me 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 show I think whatever you're pondering, you do need to listen to your higher self. Your higher self is calling you to want to walk in a happier vibration than perhaps the one that you're feeling at, in that first week. So do take the time that's needed to think about what it is that you specifically want to do and what direction you want to go, and then go that way. Like I said, I feel for some of you, you will be turning your back on somebody. You will be walking away because you're just tired of waiting, you're tired of fed up. So you do walk away in the second week, heavy in heart, but with direction, definitely with direction. So even though you may be choosing to be on your own and you're choosing to walk away from a situation, and sometimes that situation could be even the waiting of a relationship. It can be, you know what, I just want to be single <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop looking, I'm going to stop hoping for the time being, I'm just going to focus on me. 
but you do it with direction and purpose. So it turns out that actually what you're doing in that in, in that way is that you are putting yourself first, you're looking about your own, you know, prosperity, you know, this could be work, career, anything. You're putting all those other activities first, basically. But some of you would have had a plan as well to actually say, actually, I'm walking away, but I am going to walk away optimistic that actually I'm going to find another connection and that I trust that it will happen. So I don't need to necessarily be active or if I am being active, that I'm going to do it in a completely different way. So I'm either going to change the dating site I'm using or I'm not going to use a dating site anymore. I'm going to be much more active outside or I'm just going to you know, join a, a group or something. You have a purpose, basically, is what I'm trying to say. You can see. It could be that you do none of those things at all, that you just trust in the universe will bring you what it is that you need. But it's heavy in heart because sometimes when we make very big decisions, particularly if we're in an established connection and we're walking away or we've waited for somebody and we're, we're now like, no, I'm going to walk away. It does feel to me that it's for the very right reasons. And quite often, I would say here, because my guides are saying here, it's a, it by you doing that for a very small number, it is a very thing that's needed in order to get the other person's attention that you have withdrawn, that you have moving on. It is their responsibility to chase you, to try to claim you, to try to get you and all those kind of things. So the first two weeks, um, hence why I feel is very specific, because I don't think this will apply to a lot of Aquariuses that will be sort of in a much more contented, happier place. But for a small, small handful, this is your first couple of weeks, I'm afraid, sorry, from my guide's perspective. But in the positive, in the third week, and you kind of shrugged off, you know, the disappointment of life when it comes to your love life. I think there's a better realisation that, you know, the, you've got the whole world before you, that you, even in your fragile or feeling a little bit fragile um, state when it comes to disappointments in your love life, starting to now have real direction about how you want to shape it so some of you are making really firm decisions about right I'm not dating this type of person anymore as soon as they do this I'm gone you know and really sticking to it and for some of you I'm getting actually that you're so inspired about changing how people affect you and how life is going that actually some of you be really really pondering about moving like literally I'm getting that from my guys, like literally moving out of the area to completely change your perspective and your environment and the energy so that you can allow newness. Because sometimes when we make these big changes, it's scary, but actually that new energy invites new people, new everything into our realm. They're saying despite you feeling that your world's been turned upside down, even though you made that choice to change it, is actually going to be changed the right way up. Because like I said, for some of you, where particularly where you're fed up with somebody giving you a lack of something, it is their position to try to gain your attention. Because I get you so fixated on you and your needs and your feelings and how you're going to change your world and how that drives you. Like I said, even for some of you needing to actually want to move, escape, to create a new reality, a new perspective for yourself, a new frequency for yourself that it's really going to be really hard for anybody that you have turned your back on who perhaps is still trying to get your attention or, or maybe even wanting you, they're really going to have to pull something out of the bag to get your attention, basically, because you're tunnel visioned on you. And I think rightly so. I think there will be some success Will that person will do what's necessary and do what's right in order to you know, get your attention back to them. But, 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 again, it's a small handful because I think for most of you, you truly have moved forward and moved on. I think only when we come to the fourth week, there's a real need for you to trust your choice, basically. Trust that you have divinely been asked to look at yourself. Because I feel here that the panic of that reality sets in a lot in that sort of last week in terms of did I make the right decision um am I deceiving myself is there something better will this always happen to me there's all of that kind of inner talk inner clutter inner chatter that doesn't serve you other than to make you feel just as you did in the first week 
recognize that and hopefully because you've seen this video you'll recognize that and you'll know that it's just a thought it's just that ego part of your root chakra trying to unsettle you <laughs> just know it's just a thought and remember what we think we create so no you haven't been foolish no it will happen for you why because you're putting yourself first and when you give self love as, a, as those of you have heard me say this before then the very thing that you want is attracted to you. So quieten the noise, quieten the chatter, quieten your ego that is telling you, oh, you made a mistake. You should go back, backtrack. That anxiety, that panic. Don't deceive yourself, basically, is what my guides are saying here. Don't fool yourself that you are less than what you are, because that's not true. Go back to how you felt in the second and third week, particularly the third week, about creating those opportunities. But I just think it's a lingering thing. So even if you find that you can't do that, just know, come back and watch this and just know that it's just a thought and the feeling for that week because of the energy that is around you and your star sign for that week. That actually, because you have removed people that have been not serving you or harming you emotionally or not giving to you emotionally, that what you've done is you've taken control. Nobody can harm you when you have taken control because you're not going to allow it. And that's super empowering to feel that way. So I do hope that that has been helpful and resonated for those Aquariuses who were supposed to see this particular um, reading today. Because like I said, this is not going to be for all Aquariuses. Definitely a select few. I do hope that's helped you to navigate through the month of March when it comes to your love life. If you'd like to know more about me and my services or have a private reading, just look at the links below or join my Facebook community. Do like, do share and do, do subscribe as well. I've been better and it's been great to give you this reading today and you try, try to have a great March because it, it will be in the end. Take care.